but I'm hoping this parenting book, that they'll actually read that because they're having kids of their own. I think it's going to help them. Because really, they turned out beautifully. Well, there's a great example of what a grandparent can do. I mean, get this book for your children. That's a good idea. Let me ask you, David. Every child uh, has specific needs. I think that's true. We're all unique. Uh, but you boil it down to five needs that every child has. Uh, let's touch those briefly. What are the five? Love. That comes first. Respect. Competence. Spirituality. And independence. If you can meet those five needs, you're going to turn out a successful independent and effective person. David, as a young child, your daughter Emily was attached to, I think it was a pacifier. It was a pacifier. I remember in the book. Uh, tell us about that and why that was so disturbing to you. Oh my goodness. We made the mistake. I think it was a mistake looking back. We gave her the pacifier, you know, to keep her quiet and to soothe her. Well, it worked. But Emily, she's a very feisty girl and still is a feisty adult. She's strong-willed. She would not give up the pacifier. She's three years old, she's a little bit three, and she's not giving it up. She had to have it to sleep at night. I began to hate that pacifier. It was a bane of my existence. Because when she went to sleep with it, she would lose it during the night. And then wake up screaming, Ah, oh, my passy, my passy. And she, she was smart enough to know it was a certain passy she had to have. Oh, really? Any other pacifier. No, no, she knew it. The curve of it, <laughs> in my mouth. Oh, that's not another And she'd one. go, and spit it out. I would search for 20 minutes. Where is the pacifier? One night, after 20 minutes search, it had fallen down her nightshirt and was against her navel. Oh! <laughs> so the day came when saying, I said, okay, enough of the pacifier. I took it out. Now, we didn't have Emily watching to traumatize her, but it was a moment of victory for us. I had Sandy by me. I took a hammer and I shattered the pacifier. Free at last! I think I yelled something like that. Some of the neighbors, what's the matter with her? I said, I'm a psychologist. Everything's fine. <laughs> yeah, right. And then that night, she didn't have the passing. Oh, a couple nights of screaming, she got over. But the point is, she depended on that, but it, it had to be taken away from her. There was that limit we had to put on her, otherwise she'd be still have it today at 33. I mean, come on. Right. You have to make a move. Yeah, and you're putting that under the category of loving your child, but um, from the child's perspective, what does love look like? at different stages. Let's talk about the early years, those 8 to 10, 12-year-old years, and then the teen years. Time is so important for a child. Even a young child, if the love is measured in time, the time you spend with them doing what they want to do. I'll bring up the Barbie thing, even though it's traumatizing to me. <laughs> My three little girls wanted to play Barbies, Emily, Leanne, and Nancy. I held the line on the Barbie thing for years, and then somebody else, I think it was a grandparent, gave them a Barbie, and the gates were open. Let's play Barbies, Daddy. You know what? But that, that was love. That's what they wanted to do. And, and that's what did how that they look like? like? It was so frustrating to you, well, obviously. You, you walk into the big clubhouse, big place in the back of our home, and there'll be a pile of 45 naked Barbies. Because they have to be clothed. You spend 20 minutes clothing Barbie. You think it'd be a piece of cake because she's anorexically thin. <laughs> it's not true. Barbie's clothes are thinner than Barbie. <laughs> it's like, are you kidding? <laughs> Tugging on a pair of pants and a shirt, and it's all, oh, you look good in that, Barbie. That doesn't meet, meet your complexion. All the Barbies have the same complexion. No, no, I think you're more of a spring. Seriously? I have to change. But all that was about loving them. And the Barbies get together and we decide what to do. Uh, let's go to the beach. Let's do this. We're all talking and connecting. And they love doing it. And this that. is you playing with your three daughters. Oh, on the floor. And it's all verbal. Yes. The blonde was nowhere in sight. This was her brain. <laughs> Great. She might have given him the Barbie. I don't know. So this will be an hour, an hour and a half of just playing and talking. And I can't get Barbies. You can't get Barbie shoes on. I'm just here to tell you. They're incredibly small. And you can only find one shoe. Well, they have to match. Even little girls know that. That's a brown shoe and that's a green shoe, Daddy. I said, who cares? We're not going out. <laughs> no, no, they have to. And so we talk and it was fun. And they felt love His dad was going to do that. Yeah, chit-chat, chit-chat. But now your son comes along. What did he do with the Barbies? <laughs> Threw them across the room? He would tear their heads off. And burn them. <laughs> I know, it's true, isn't <laughs> it? We're not going to do that. We didn't even do the G.I. Joe thing. Yeah, go G.I. Joe. He was out there, and we were just, it was all sports with me. Activity. He loved sports. He's a great golfer, tennis player. We did that for years. Yes. Worked out well because I'm a golfer myself. And you've hit it through those stages. I mean, being engaged, spending time is what you said. And that time then is what they want to do with you, right? That's what you're saying. Don't do what you want to do. Do what they want to do. Yeah. Dad in my office a few weeks ago, and he has got a teenage boy, and the teenage boy loves to fish. The dad hates to fish. He's always hating. I said, I don't care what you think or what you feel. You're taking your son fishing. That's his thing. I hit a couple of years of that, will that kill you? You do what he wants to do. I want I, to play golf. No, your son hates golf. Don't do that. It's yeah. just common sense. You, you, you sacrifice. Meet your kid where they're, where they're at. 
fine. Whatever they want to do. Now, that's really good. You also described that parenting three steps. So describe for us what that is. It all is about relationship. First step of parenting, parenting one step is we, we're going to build, we're going to meet these five needs in your child's life. Love, respect, competence, spirituality, and independence. And when you do that, you're going to have a successful child. I'm convinced of it because it worked for our kids and many hundreds of parents I've seen in my practice. The second parenting two-step is when you meet those needs, you're building the relationship. Most important thing, when they hit all along, when they hit teens, that relationship is vitally important to navigate them through all the horrible stuff Satan has for them to sample. And then the final three-step, parent three-step, is when you've done those first two steps, you're effective. Mm. You're going to be an effective parent and your efforts are going to pay off. And they're going to listen to you when you really need them to listen. Well, that's really good. And that's all in the book, which is really helpful. Uh, you also ask or suggest that you ask three questions uh, of yourself, your child, and your parenting team when it comes to your relationship with each child. But what are those questions? Now, this is tough. We did this way back in the day. It felt like the right thing to do. you got to get the feedback. Number one, what... You know, how am I doing in this relationship, building the relationship with you? What am I doing right? Yeah. And hopefully they're, well, Dad, you're doing this, you're doing that. It was the child. Or, of course, the blonde always knew. She knows everything. <laughs> She's with them all day long. She's way ahead of you. Oh, she told me. So I would ask her, honey, and, she, and I would take her advice every time because she just knows. Women just know. The moms know. She might not be able to be the one to do it. I'm the dad, but she can let me know what to do. So what am I doing right? Second, of course, what am I doing wrong? I'm open to feedback. That's a real man or a real mom, real woman who will ask that question. Uh, what am I doing that's hurting our relationship? Children know when they have permission to say, they might just tell you. Or even close friends. I want to ask Bob Johns. Uh, we, would, we used to go to Havana Villa, just this guy that had uh, the best Cuban sandwiches in town. And he knew the kids. He'd interact with them. And so he'd give me great advice. Dave, I'm telling you, I would do this. I would do that. He's got a couple of great boys. And I'd give him, I'd give him advice. That really helped. And even more helpful, don't do this. Exactly. I mean, really. Stop doing that. Or don't, I tried that. It didn't work. Yeah. And then the third question is, you know, on an ongoing basis, I tell me, when you catch me doing something I shouldn't be doing, uh, or it's not helping, to please tell me because I don't want to make a mistake. Yeah. And I also would put in there, when I'm doing something right, you know, let me know. G give me some feedback. That's good. You know, one thing I did, Dave, which was really helpful, is when the boys were bringing their report cards home, I created a little daddy report card for them. I had like seven things Ooh, to like it. That. Yeah, it was really good. And I just asked them, you know, A to F, have I spent enough time with you in this last semester? Have we laughed enough together? Have I taught you something that you need to know, like changing a tire or something? And then spiritually, have I taught you about God in a way that is drawing you closer to him. Those are kind of the questions I would ask. The lowest grade I ever got was a C, <laughs> which was time together. It was a busy, a busy period, but mostly it's B's and A's. But I decided it opened up the dialogue. That's what you're driving at. It, it begins to open up discussion between you and your children about how you're doing as yeah. a father or a mother. True. And even to ask the question of a child is an indication, I love you. Yeah. I love you enough. I'm open to whatever you'll tell me. Yeah. Just respond to that. Hey, David, as we close uh, today, and I want to come back next time and keep the dialogue going, we've got more of those five uh, things that children need. We've covered love, one of them, but let's come back next time and cover the other four. But uh, as we close out, speak to that parent who feels overwhelmed. I'm thinking of that mom that is so stressed out, dad is checked out, and she's trying to carry this big load. And that may be exactly where you're at as a listener. What can they do to begin to form that solid relationship with each child individually? What advice do you have for them? I'd say, first of all, boy, join the club. Sandy and I, many times during parenting, we're overwhelmed. We're not getting this done. It doesn't look good. And you worry so much because how they turn out means everything to you. Yeah. So you embrace that. But at the same time, you make it a matter of prayer. And I think having a plan, I've got a plan in the book. It works. You've got to follow a clear plan. All the principles are biblical, and you will carry the day. There's times when you don't think you will, but you will carry the day. They will turn out okay. David, this is so good, and the time has flown by. Uh, I want to come back again and talk about those other attributes children need from us as parents. But first, uh, let me remind the listeners of Focus on the Family. We are here for you. Uh, we have caring Christian counselors and other great resources like our Seven Traits of Effective Parenting Assessment. It's free. It's a quick quiz that takes about five minutes to do, and it will highlight those things you're doing well, and it'll show you some things that you may need to strengthen, and there's suggestions 
to uh, use some great tools and resources there for you, too. One of those great tools is Dr. Clark's book, Parenting is Hard and Then You Die, a fun but honest look at raising kids of all ages right. That's the title and subtitle. And I am grateful to David. Uh, We're publishing that along with Tyndale, and it's a wonderful book. And we'll send that to you as our way of saying thank you for a monthly pledge or even a one-time gift of any amount. You can give the kind of hope Jim is talking about when you donate. And uh, when you do, request your copy of Parenting is Hard and Then You Die. And be sure to take that uh, parenting assessment as well. Our website is focusonthefamily.com slash broadcast. And our phone number, 800, the letter A in the word family, 800-232-6459. On behalf of Jim Daly and the entire team, thanks for joining us today for Focus on the Family. I'm John Fuller, inviting you back as we continue with Dr. David Clark and, once again, help you and your family thrive in Christ. You're listening to Focus on the Family's weekend broadcast. We'll take a quick break and then return with the second half of this program for your family. Stay tuned. Sandy and I, many times during the period, were overwhelmed. We're not getting this done. It doesn't look good. And you worry so much because how they turn out means everything to you. Yeah. So you embrace that, but at the same time, you make it a matter of prayer. And I think having a plan, I've got to follow a clear plan. All the principles are biblical, and you will carry the day. There's times when you don't think you will, but you will carry the day. They will turn out. Dr. David Clark is with us again today on Focus on the Family. I'm John Fuller, and your host is Focus President and author Jim Daly. I'm so glad to have David back with us today. Last time we talked about the challenges and joys of parenting. But sometimes you can feel like you're in a war zone. Uh, But with an effective parenting team, as David described last time, Uh, You can make it through and thrive. And uh, those things, that parenting team, as he described, includes God, your relationship with God, along with your church family, coaches, and, of course, your spouse. And you can raise successful kids, always remembering they they have their own free will, and that's always going to come into it. But we also touched on those basic needs every child has, which we're going to get back into today. We covered love last time, and we're going to get to the other four. And uh, if you'd like to review the last program, You'll find the links at focusonfamily.com slash broadcast or call us and we can send you a CD. And certainly we'd be happy to send you a copy of David's book, Parenting is Hard and Then You Die. Our number is 800-232-6459. David has been a family therapist for over 30 years and he's been here on the broadcast a number of times. He's got some really great wisdom and insights and uh, some pretty fun ways of delivering the critical (laughs) truths as well. He's brutally honest. That's the thing. David, welcome back to Focus. Thanks. It's so good. I mean, I love your energy. I love your humor. And it's I, 